Hey, good morning, Rackets. It's Mrs. Welcome Bush. We are continuing our book club today with uh, Galaxy Games, The Challengers. We, um, by Greg R. Fishbone, we are beginning chapter 20 today. Here we go. I hope I do much better with the names today. And if I don't, bear with me. Platt Bluff, Nevada. Tyler Stott couldn't concentrate on his schoolwork. As Mrs. Hogan droned on about math, all he could think about was the space bus that would be coming for him directly after class. The bus would whisk Tyler away to Earth's high-tech Galaxy Games complex under construction at a former Olympics venue in Greece. There he would meet his team in person for the first time, and probably for the last time as well. As much as Tyler wanted to visit the other worlds, the team would do better with someone more athletic as their captain, with someone more honest as their captain, with someone other than Tyler Sato as their captain. Quitting the team was the mature 11-year-old thing to do. Tyler Sato, are you paying attention? Asked Mrs. Hogan. Yes, said Tyler, but of course that was a lie. It didn't help that Tyler's cousin, Dakai, who had learned a decent amount of English in the past two months, suddenly insisted on speaking to him only in Japanese. Tyler's new language implant still needed some adjustment, so each translation twanged his neurons like a harp player with thorn-covered fingers. Tell the teacher I need to use the bathroom, Dakai whispered in Japanese and a fresh spike of pain bounded out inside of Tyler's skull. Tell yourself, Tyler shot back. You know how to say that in English. That's the first thing that you learned. Well, there are subtle, subtle shades of meaning that are only a native speaker can convey, Dakai explained. What subtle shades, said Tyler. You need to use the bathroom. On a scale of one to 10, how badly do you need to go? About a three. So, all right, you don't need a Japanese to English translator to tell her that. Tyler, Takai, Mrs. Hogan shut the boys a stern glance from the front of the room. Do you have something to share with the class? Takai stood and cleared his throat. Mrs. Hogan sensei, I need the bathroom pass, please. I have to do a number three. While the class laughed, Tyler dropped his head into his hands. Okay, maybe you do need a translator. At lunch, it seemed like the entire school was filled with Tyler's table, which filed past Tyler's table to wish him luck. It's just orientation and training, Tyler repeated over and over, like a robot version of himself. And I'll be home way before the end of it, he added silently. Tyler couldn't stand to look at another kid or teacher directly in the eye, and he figured that would be the way things had to be from now on. Once he quit the team, he would be too ashamed to look anyone in the eye for the rest of his life. Dude, you totally don't look as happy as you probably have to feel, said Brayden in typical Brayden style. Yeah, what's up, asked Lucas. There's nothing dull about orientation and training when it's orientation and training to play against kids on the other side of the galaxy with your own team of international all-stars. Yeah, I guess. Tyler shuffled his feet and avoided his friend's eyes even more than anyone else's. Go kick some alien butts for us, okay, asked Lucas. If they even have butts, I'll kick them, Tyler promised. Even if they don't have butts. Find something on them that looks like a butt, said Brayden. Use your imaginations and squint if you have to. Okay. Brayden squinted and unsquinted his eyes to demonstrate. Now my elbow looks like an elbow, and now my elbow looks like a butt. Well, sort of. But don't kick it for real, because I'm only showing you it as an example. Takai tapped Tyler on the shoulder and made a painful Japanese exclamation. Look, even Eric Parker is coming over to wish you good luck. Tyler forced his head to turn toward Eric's usual table. His former best friend, who hadn't said a single word to him in months, was really shuffling over to Tyler's lunch table. Could Eric have finally gotten up, had given up his pizza party grudge? Eric kept walking until he stood directly in front of Tyler. Hi, Eric, said Tyler. Hi, Tyler, said Eric. I saw you on news that you had a translator thing in your head now. Tyler put a finger on the side of his head and felt the inch-long incision line. The language implant that lets me speak and understand other language. What about it? I thought it was interesting, that's all. Eric rocked back and forth on the heels of his sneakers. When I found out about it, I went on the internet and learned how to say that you're a jerk in five languages. Tyler Sato is a jerk. Tyler Sato is a jerk. Tyler Sato is a jerk. Tyler Sato is a delicious meat-filled pastry. Tyler Sato is a jerk. Tyler went to the five-way translation. Thanks a lot. You know, the fourth one doesn't mean what you think it does. Oh, so now you think you know more about the internet, Eric de demanded. That makes you a mega super ultra jerk. He turned and stomped back to his table. Why are you smiling, Tyler Khan? Takai asked. 
because Eric's talking to me again instead of ignoring me. That's progress. Maybe we'll be playing hoops in his driveway again someday, just like old times. Forget him, Tyler, said Lucas between the bites of potato puff. The entire galaxy is your driveway now. Tyler's going to disappear. I can't swish a 30 farther, farther from an X of a chalk anywhere else. I'm pretty sure of it. If only the Galaxy Game Tournament could take all place, all take place in Eric Parker's driveway, Tyler wouldn't have to quit the team. 20 minutes before the school day officially ended, Principal Johnson, Johansson, made an announcement over the PA. Tyler Sato, report to the parking lot. Your bus-like thing has arrived. We'll see you next month, Tyler, said Mrs. Hogan, and don't think that being an interstellar sports star will get you out of your homework obligations. Of course not, Mrs. Hogan. Tyler got up and swept his books into his NFL backpack. Dekai stood as well. Do you have to go number three again, Dekai? Mrs. Hogan asked with a slight smirk. Dekai spoke in Japanese. I have something important to tell my cousin before he leaves. I think I've done something really bad and he needs to know. The language implant buzzed inside Tyler's skull. That transition couldn't be right, he thought. Tyler was the one who had lied to the entire world about being such a great athlete. Dekai couldn't have done anything as bad as that. He tried to look at his cousin for a clue, but Dekai was unreadable. What did he say? asked Mrs. Hogan. Tyler gave him her a fake smile. He wants to be my honor guard to escort me to the bus. Please, Mrs. Hogan, it would mean a lot to him. Mrs. Hogan waved her hand. Fine, fine, but come right back, okay? Okay, Mrs. Hogan sensei, said Dekai. Dekai bit his lip and clenched his hands as they walked together through the empty school hall school hallway. Tyler held his forehead ready for a new wave of pain. From Dekai's expression, Tyler imagined his cousin was about to say something that could hurt, whether in English or Japanese. Spill it, Dekai Khan. Dekai took a long breath in and out. Cousin Tyler Khan, do you remember choosing a girl from Japan to be on your Galaxy Games team? The judo champion asked Tyler. Uh, Tamako something? Tamako Tamazawa, said Dekai. Yeah, I remember. The Japanese nominating community put her on top of the pile with the star by name. Somebody must have been really impressed by her. No, I was the one who put her on the top of the pile, Dekai confessed, and I made the star. You? Tyler thought back to the afternoon when he had made his picks. You said you'd seen her a couple times and that she was really good, he said. I've seen her more than a couple times. Tamako-chan was my friend back in Tokyo. Tyler stopped short in surprise. Oh. He started walking in, taking extra long steps to catch up with his cousin. Why didn't you ever tell me that you had a girlfriend in Japan? She's not my girlfriend, said the Kai, but she was a very good friend. Then I left to visit America and Tamako got really mad about it. I haven't really spoken to her since then. She's sort of like, well, my very own Eric Parker. Tyler thought about that for a few moments. Okay, so she's mad at you. Worse than that, said Dekai. She's mad at you for taking me away from her. I am so sorry, Cousin Tyler Khan. It will not be easy for you to be on the team with her. All the people who are mad at me should be from a club, Tyler grumbled. They could call themselves the Tyler Haters International Association. Eric Tamako, Senator Archer, the seclusionist, even John Moon hasn't forgiven me for going through the United Nations to get my team together. And it's all my fault the Western Shoshone Nation doesn't have a seat at the General Assembly. Tyler pushed the door to the parking, opened the door to the parking lot and found a zoo of reporters, camera operators, and at least three helicopters. In other words, the usual after school crowd. A reporter lunged forward and, and stuck a microphone into Kai's face. Tyler Sato, how does it feel to finally have your team in training? I'm Tyler, he waved his hand. Over here. The reporter turned and blinked. Really? I thought for sure you'd be taller. Tyler gave his cousin a sideways glance. Dekai had gotten a haircut recently, and maybe he did look a bit more like Tyler than he had before. But he couldn't possibly more be more like Tyler than Tyler than himself. A group of police officers formed into a line and pushed the reporters back with the plastic riot shields. Clear the path. The boy has places to go and aliens to meet. A red-faced police captain put his hand on Dekai's shoulders. It's okay, son. These jackals won't bother you while my truck is on duty. Tyler shouted, Hey, excuse me. I'm Tyler Sato, not him. Oh, sorry about that. The police captain's face got three shades redder than it had before. 
I just figured you'd be taller. Taller than what? Tyler demanded. Taller than Dakai? Well, that must be your bus, Dakai pointed through the gap in the reporters to an orange metal shark with black fins. Tyler grinned at the side of the interstellar space bus. Part of the fleet of the Earth's leaders had leased from the Osmanian Empire and fitted it with human-style seats. The bus looked dangerous and cool, but as Tyler viewed the strange symbols printed on the side of the bus, his language implant created English words that seemed to float in the air like subtitles in a foreign movie. Property of the Horizon Nat Nursery School, number 4749, New Osmedia Third. It would probably be best if he didn't tell anybody about that part. I'm sure, I sure wouldn't be able to run an on an alien bus like that, said Dakai. I had a t panic attack just on a regular plane from Japan. It has gravity systems, said Tyler. Mafrosa said that if you close your eyes, it doesn't feel like you're moving at all. Dakai shook his head. I would still know. Have a safe trip, cousin Tyler Khan. I will, said Tyler. And I'll say hi to your girlfriend for you. She's not my girlfriend. Tyler stomped through the crowd of the microphone waving reporters until they reached an even larger crowd of wool wishers and fans. He could tell they were all fans from their homemade signs. Everyone wanted to shake Tyler's hands or slap him on the back or tell him how great he was. It made Tyler feel worse than before. He wondered if they'd be cheering if they knew he actually wasn't the greatest sports hero of all time. If they knew Mafraza had been trying to pass her planet's tournament slot to another world she could find, it was a bad case of cookies, of cooties on the playground. The bus driver honked the horn to hurry Tyler along, or at least Tyler thought it was the horn. It sounded like somebody strangling a goat. Yeah, yeah. Tyler scanned the crown for his parents and sister, but they were probably still at home packing, so he could join, so they could join him at the training complex while he settled in. A door hissed open on the other side of the shark, and Tyler scrambled inside. Um, hello, I'm Tyler Sada, he said to the six-armed yellow puffball at the wheel. Squeeze a daka maka fa, the, fluff, the puff ball shouted through a mouth shaped like a megaphone. A spike of pain stabbed in the left side of Tyler's head as the language implant pushed an English transition to his brain. Move to the back of the bus. Uh, yes, sir, ma'am, um, thing. Hoot squeege, the puff ball replied. Just move. The other kids were already on the bus just staring at him with awe. So Capito, shouted the boy with a dark copper skin and bright green Brazilian soccer shirt. Tyler remembered him from his dossier picture. He had a long name that Tyler couldn't quite remember, but the boy was Tyler Sato whispered a Chinese girl, who then blushed and looked away. Tyler tried to remember her name, whether it's a Ming or Ping, no, it was Ling, short for Ling Wa Bei. Ling was a gymnast and certainly had the build of a gymnast, small and thin, like a much younger child. Tyler knew Ling had to be stronger than she looked, but her image wasn't helped by the pastel barrettes pinning back her hair or the gigantic red leather boots that didn't quite reach up to the floor of the bus. In Vickerskat ist will klein es men fürschnen, said the boy with rudy cheeks. Wild blonde hair and friendly eyes, Tyler thought his words sounded like German, which would make him think of Felix Hoffman, a soccer goalie who played against some much older boys. He looked so much shorter than on the TV, came the translation. The kids shouted in several languages at once. Then, along with Tyler, they all grabbed their heads in pain. Synchronized headaches groaned, Tyler. We really are a team. I'm glad you survived that scary crowd, said Ling. Those people aren't scary, Tyler told him. Those are our fans, not them over there. Ling pointed to the other side of the bus at a larger, angrier group of people. They were shaking their fists and making ugly faces. Some of them also had homemade signs. Seclusionist, asked Tyler. One went through a rock. It shattered like a snowball against the bus window. Others started throwing rocks as well. They pushed forward and there were so many of them that the police couldn't stop them. A girl with purple health spoke quickly in Japan. She had to be Dakai's friend, Tamako Tamazawa, the judo champion. Tyler's language implant buzzed with a translation that included Tamako's snarky tone. They're trying to block the bus. 
what are they going to do about it? Great and powerful. What are you going? What are you going to do about it? Great and powerful, Tyler Sato. The puffball driver opened the door to let a soldier push somebody else aboard. It was a boy who fell awkwardly on the floor of the bus. When he stood up, Tyler re realized it was his cousin, Dakai. Don't worry, Tyler, you're safe now, the soldier told Dakai as the door closed. I am not Tyler, Dakai shouted. He pounded his fist on the door. Let me out. Somebody let me out. I am not supposed to be here. Suck a duck over my fro, the puffball shouted. Dakai didn't need a language implant to know that the alien wanted to, him to move away from the door. He jumped back and fell into the seat next to the shocked Tamako Tamazian. Um, ah, hi, Tamako-chan, he said to her. I like what you've done with your hair. The crowds and the landscape fell away in the as the space bus rose into the clouds. Whew, you guys, we're going to have to work on some of those translations. And I think we're just going to be like Tyler. We're just going to have to hit our own translations on some of those. But anyway, that's it for today. I'll be with you soon. Bye, Rockets.